and we're back on this Mercedes and so you know the inside the cab it's 115 degrees I just started it up it's 146 degrees all this plastic up here and it's hundred and like 35 degrees inside the dash so we could see the startup point so we got a supply of 61 degrees we're at 84 degrees our outside temperature right now Look at how low the high side is. Only 171 PSI on the high side. 41 on the low side. This is a dual of operators. I have front and rear air conditioning on. So there's a real air conditioning with a separate evaporator in the rear of this car on this Mercedes. And you can see this right down there. You see that liquid line? You see that T in a second liquid line? That's going to the rear evaporator. And then if you look right here, you see that silver line right there and you see this insulated suction line? That's going to the rear evaporator or the second evaporator on this car. And you can tell that when you come over here, it gives you both charge quantities for a front only evaporator or front and rear. So you have that option. This one is being loaded up with 150, 15 degrees interior air. I'm in recycle mode because I don't want the colder air from here. I wanna load the hell out of the evaporator. I wanna make this AC and make the pressure go as high as possible. Look, it's come down to 166 PSI on my side. That's really not calculating with these, these internet professors and couch potato professors who say, oh yeah, you take outside air and you put some pressure or temperature on it or, or uh, just, just a bunch of bullshit. <laughs> That's all right. We're down to 55 degrees. Uh, at 55 degrees, let me take this uh, ambient temperature at 80, 87 degrees, and let me get, let's get, let's see what the ambient air temperature, actually, recycle ambient air. Let's see what the ambient air temperature is in here now. It should be dropping down nice and cold. So we suck up here, down here, there we go, because our uh, air is being sucked up through the fresh air in there, because I have it on recycle mode, because I want the temperature and it should be dropping fast. Oh, we're down to 90 degrees. So inside the cabin has dropped from 115 degrees to 90 degrees being recycled right now. Uh, now, I'm not taking my subcooling in the correct place. I'm taking it where I can connect to. If I want, wish I could. I think that's the inlet. Yeah, that's maybe the discharge at 160 and it seems a little cold i'm um, after the receiver dryer so it has dropped temperature kind of like getting more sub cooling just the surface of the receiver dryer the refrigerant passing through it drops some more so i'm taking my sub cooling in there incorrect place see where it says four or three sub cooling on this and this is a mercedes but i'm taking it in the wrong place uh same with my superheat I can't get back there towards the evaporator and we have the second T coming in the subcooler from the rear. So I'm getting the overall subcooling from the front and the rear with several feet of uninsulated line coming from the rear evaporator teaming in. So I'm taking an overall subcooling plus what heat it picks up from under here. So my sub, uh, superheat is wrong. God, I was saying subcooling, wasn't I? Yeah. My superheat is wrong, my subcooling is wrong, but it gives you a general. Let's throw some RPMs on this thing. It's a variable displacement compressor, and let's see how this one reacts. We know we're hot as hell. We're, we're only 87 degrees, 89 degrees outside. Their little temperature says 84 degrees down there on their ambient temperature sensor. So let's, uh, let's roasty up uh, Oh, I think this car, it only takes 1,700 RPMs to make it go 55 miles an hour down the road. So let's try to not hit 2,000 RPMs. Come on, keep my foot right about there. And uh, let's see what's happening. Oh, we're dropping a few degrees now. And let's see. Oh, we got some high side pressure going on here now. This vehicle reacts to RPMs. But we also have a super heavy load over it. Oh, it's coming down. Am I up there? I'm right about 2,000 RPMs. And we're steady out. So for boiling um, 87 degrees outside, 
and we're dropped down to 90 degrees 90 degrees at that point because this cool air is going around we're 115 degrees behind me and uh, i dropped down to 15 we got a vibrating engine this thing needs a tune-up how many miles 34,000 miles it's a little uh rough for a mercedes i never feel the mercedes this feels like a, a shitty ass american car um we're down to 44 degrees Ni our inside air is down to 99 degree 90 degrees we're at 44 out the dash and you can see that you can see my transition point where it changed over from being uh the supply was up because inside the dash it was 136 degrees inside there and it's dropping down 44 degrees let me get back up there to 2000 rpms and then we'll come back to idle and we'll see what happens hold it right at 2000 rpms my foot is having a problem keeping it there the computers wants to take over i just i think i just seen it drop a little bit 42 Remember, our superheat and our subcooling are wrong because of where the placement of my temperature sensors are. Okay, we can see where I hit the 2,000 RPMs. And um, what were we around 165 at idle. And we're at 38 at idle. But now that we're at 2,000 RPMs, we're down 21 PSI damn i've heard that was really really low and that's like no good isn't that isn't that what the internet says and uh everybody says somewhere 30 to 40 well we're 87 degrees outside and we're hot as hell in here and we got 21 psi that just doesn't calculate by what all the professors say on youtube or facebook or the internet or hvac forms coming down 216 psi it's really not calculating out what a lot of guys say that should be right hmm interesting and that's with the cabin hot uh what is our temperature right now or is it colder outside or inside right now well we're nearly identical to outside temperature right now 86 degrees so it's basically the interior of the temperature is about the same we come down to 42 degrees out of the dash on this field. What is it back here? And uh, I don't have my thermometer stuck in the back. And I should put this up all the way. Put that down all, I gotta put that down all the way. I didn't have it all the way. Down to 55, 54, down to 50 degrees. Open that puppy up more. I didn't have it enough. Okay, now let's get it back up took my foot off the gas while I turned around. I'm gonna stick our uh, temperature sensor in the rear. I forgot to grab another one for a third, third reading. And I gotta get back in on the other old Mercedes inside there. Okay, let's take that out. Stick that in the rear. Okay, now I'm in, now I'm in the rear. Let's see what our supply is. Coming down, coming down. Now that's the rear now. Smaller evaporator in the rear. And um, there's our high side, our low side still low. I jacked up, I didn't have the rear turned all the way up. My mistake, I wanted to have both evaporators loading the system. God dang it, I blew my uh, that blows my learning curve on this vehicle. So I, I see this vehicle and I'll see it for years after year after year after year. Original owner comes to the same shop, has problems, will bring it back, has problems. Something, it's a Mercedes and it's old. He's always gonna have problems. Not as bad as an Audi, but um, getting there. Well, we're, we're our rear, we're down to 45 and all this interior is giving off a lot of heat and that's what it's fighting right now this air is fighting bringing this 130 146 degree temperature all this interior all these seats that are super hot 
have to be brought down before everything will have a load off of it. So I'm gonna go work on the other vehicle and I'm just gonna let this one out here run and see what it's like sitting out here in the sun after 15, 20 minutes. See you guys.